The Pokemon-themed 8th entry in the Glitch series only reached the prestige of an 8-tier event, but that doesn't mean the tournament wasn't still filled with talented players and exciting moments. And you almost certainly weren't able to catch every single important set this weekend, but that's where Pro Guides is here to help. We'll let you know about the most important results, the biggest upsets, and the must-watch sets in this Glitch 8 recap. But before we dive into this weekend's results, I want to remind you about our on-demand coaching on ProGuides.com. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to our Play With Pros platform, along with a plethora of exclusive content all posted daily. Make sure you don't miss our new Pro Course with MK Leo himself, a new one with Esam, as well as others coming soon. But with that out of the way, let's talk about the Glitch 8 Champion Tweak. The TSM multi-character specialist was coming into Glitch 8 hoping to shake off his rough 25th at Let's Make Big Moves earlier this month. And he was able to play pretty strong throughout almost the entire tournament to finish in first place. On his road to winner's finals, Tweak only dropped a single game while picking up wins over both Dylan Waddy's Robs as well as Stroder's Greninja. In winner's finals against Dark Wizzy, things first started to get sketchy as he lost the first two games against the Mario main playing out of his mind at Glitch 8. But Tweak swapped from Wario to Wolf and was able to reverse 3-0 Dark Wizzy in three very tight games. When the pair met again in grand finals, the Wolf now was wasn't working against Wizzy either, which led him to swap to Roy in Game 3 to hopefully recapture that same magic he had in their winner's set. But the Roy couldn't do it either, and Dark Wizzy reset the bracket with a strong 3-0. At that moment, every single Tweak fan started to feel an overwhelming sense of dread, thinking, oh no, it's happening again. But even after choking Game 1 while throwing away his second stock with horrible DI, Tweak was able to win three straight games to take home the event. What one Tweak this set was his adaptation to Dark Wizzy fishing for kills with up and later forward smash. Tweak started to feel out the cadence that these moves were being thrown out, causing Wizzy to struggle taking stocks, especially seeing as he largely wasn't able to stop Tweak's recoveries. Seeing Tweak able to stay confident in grands after dropping a set and while jumping between his three mains gives me slightly more confidence than I had after big moves, but I'm still holding back throwing my complete faith in Tweak yet again until we see how he performs at the much more stacked Gen Genesis 7 this weekend. It cannot be said enough how great Dark Wizzy's Mario performed this weekend. He came into the event with a huge chip on his shoulder after being, in his words, unbelievably angry at his 22nd placement on the recently released Panda Global Rankings. Even though this type of reaction is quite common during ranking season, I'm inclined to believe him after taking a look at his run from this event. Before being double eliminated by Tweak, Dark Wizzy had a monster run which included beating Tweak, DeBuzz, Esam, Fatality and ZD. The game that best demonstrates the concentrated fervor that Dark Wizzy was playing with a glitch 8 comes from Game 1 against Esam in Losers Finals. He was down 3 stocks to 1 against the defending glitch champion who had a quality weekend of his own, looking like he could also come from losers to win the tournament. But the chances of that greatly diminished as Dark Wizzy reversed 3 stocked the Pikachu, going on to win the set 3-1 by calling out Esam's liberal use of dash attack as a kill option more and more as the set progressed. So this event definitely created many more Dark Wizzy fans than there already was, myself very much included. But will Wizzy be able to carry his fiery performance from coast to coast for Genesis 7 next weekend? Only time will tell, but there will certainly be a bigger target on his back after this run. At bigger events this year, it might be looking like that number one seed may be cursed even worse than first seed Samsora who got 9th at big moves. Meister ended up finishing 17th this weekend. He ended up placing so low after failing to close out two intense Game 5 sets, first against Stroder's Greninja on winner's side, and then later against Light's Fox on loser's side. It might be fair to start to question Meister's potential to adapt in these longer sets against opponents, because his run to 7th of big moves also came with him failing to win Game 5 against both Kameme and Nairo. You could potentially point the finger to the fact that Game & Watch has gained a ton of notoriety thanks to Meister's successes with the character, and now top players have begun to grind the matchup more so that they aren't caught off guard by the 2D man's tricks. But these storylines around Meister's third PGR season are still developing, and it's hard to start making blanket statements from just two big events. Just like the previous two players we talked about, Meister is also going to be throwing his hat into the ring at Genesis. So keep your eye out to see if we're potentially seeing the end of Game 
Human Watch's hot hand in Smash Ultimate. And the reason Light was in Losers so early to face off with Meister was thanks to Dill, the 37th seeded Rob main from New York who went on the biggest run of his ultimate career here at Glitch 8. Dill ended the A-tiered event with a 7th place finish, but not before also upsetting Blazing Pasta's Peach, Raffi X in the Ditto, and reverse 3-0-ing Sinji's Pac-Man. Between Dill's run here and the plethora of upsets Rob mains have pulled out this year, like Zomba over Raito, Epic Gabriel over Leon, and Raffi X over Ryuga, it's looking like a great year to be a robot main. I'm even getting slight flashbacks to the rise of Game & Watch that we talked about a bit earlier. What do you guys think about it? Is it just a coincidence that 2020 has been good for Rob main so far, or do you think we might see I Hate Playing Rob & Bracket become the new I Hate Playing Game & Watch? Let us know in the comments. And while we're on the topic of characters, let's discuss Cosmos making the crazy move of pulling out his Corin against a Buzz. The commentators and pretty much everyone watching saw him switching off Inkling after going down 0-2 in the set as essentially waving a white flag. But somehow, someway, Cosmos not only took Game 3, but went on to reverse 3-0 to Buzz, beating both his Rosalina and his Olimar with what some consider the worst Fire Emblem character in the game. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any more Corrin during Cosmos' fourth place run at Glitch, largely due to the fact that his tried and true inkling put in work against Mr. Ian Winners and knocking both Dill and Puppe out of the event in Losers. With this performance alongside other recent showings like 5th at Dreamhack Atlanta and 2nd at Nightmare on Smashville, it's finally looking like we're starting to see the tides turn back in Cosmos' favor like they were near the beginning of the game's life cycle. Breaking into the top 10 in Ultimate is going to take a whole lot more than this, but if he continues playing like he did at Glitch, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for Cosmos in 2020. Leon also pulled out some weird character choices this weekend, but it didn't go nearly as well as it did for Cosmos. Coming off an extremely disappointing 33rd at Let's Make Big Moves, fans of the Bowser main were hoping for him to at least hold his 15th seed this weekend. And while he did technically do that, he didn't have a pretty path to 13th. Beating Sinji was a nice pickup for Leon, but it's for sure greatly overshadowed and cancelled out by his 1-2 loss to Fatality's Falcon in later 0-3 against Arfang's Pichu. In that set against Arfang is where we saw those previously alluded to non-traditional character choices. Banjo in Game 1 and Game & Watch in Games 2 and 3 didn't go nearly as poorly as the O3 would have you expect, as Leon's secondaries were able to take Arfeng to last stock in every single game. But a loss is still a loss, which makes this another not-so-great event for Leon in 2020, which is hopefully a streak he won't continue as the year goes on. And lastly, before we finish off this video, let's run rapid-fire through some results of some other players that we didn't quite have time to talk in depth. Kishiru, the Japanese Pikachu main, upset 17th seed Jackal and came really close to picking up a handful of quality wins outside his region at this Pokemon-themed event, but wasn't quite able to close out sets against Stroder and Ryuga on his way to a 25th place finish. Young Link main Toast follows up the run of a lifetime at Let's Make Big Moves with another great event by finishing 17th at Glitch 8, picking up a win over MVD Snake while being eliminated by Ben999's Luigi and Cola's Roy both in sets that went the distance. Bonk! A Meta Knight main from Philly, who you may or may not be listening to right now, and also never gets to play on stream at Majors, falls short of holding his 42nd seed at the event, losing 2-0 to Utopian Ray's Palu on Day 1, and losing 2-0 to Names Fox on Day 2. I was having controller problems, but, but good games, guys. Swiss Snake main and 103rd seed Kepler was knocked into losers as expected by Arfang, but was able to eliminate Utopian Ray and Matador's Wario both from the event before being knocked out by DM to finish 33rd. Although Puppe just barely missed making top 8, the event ended up being an overall pretty positive one for the Pokemon trainer main who beat Ryuga, ZD, and Suarez this weekend. Stroder continues to help put Greninja on the map in Ultimate, tying for 5th with the Buzz on a run that included taking a game off of Tweak and sets off of Magister, Cosmos, and Meister. And lastly, Rivers becomes victim of some pretty unfortunate bracket luck, having to play light almost immediately after dropping down to the loser side of the bracket, finishing at 25th without getting a real chance to pad his resume with some PGR wins. And that about does it for Pro Guides' recap of Glitch 8. Let us know in the comments below which sets from the event that you enjoyed watching the most or which player you think had the best run this weekend. If you enjoy this kind of content here on the Pro Guides channel or have any ideas on how we could improve it, also let us know down below as well so we can keep on boosting the quality of how we inform you about the competitive ultimate scene. Lastly, make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss out on any content on the competitive ultimate scene in the future.